so much, um, such a nice introduction and giving me um, such a nice opportunity to just share my uh, research area with you. And um, I'm uh, quite working on the uh, numerical method for fluid flows. And my uh, research interests include uh, proper orthogonal decomposition, reduced order model, closure modeling, data-driven, variational mod scale, and also numerical analysis of POD and ROM. I hope you have heard some of these names before. And today I will talk about uh, one of my recent work, which is data-driven variational mod scale, reduced order model. In that work, we investigate how we increase the numerical accuracy of the current reduced order model. And um, please, during the presentation, if you have any question, you can interrupt me and you can ask, the, ask your question. Here is my outline. I will just give brief introduction related to reduced order model. And then I will explain what is proper orthogonal decomposition is. And then I will explain Galarkin Rome, which is the most straightforward reduced order model. And then I will talk about closure modeling, why we need it. And then the main part will be data driven variational mod scale reduced order model. At the end, I will summarize my work and I will explain something future work. Okay. Um, I had such a nice. Um, opportunity to just work with um, enthusiastic researchers. I just listed some of their names in here. In that project, I worked with first four uh, researchers, um, Trian Ilescu, who was my uh, ex-academic advisor, and Chan Hanmo, who was my academic brother. OK. Um, by looking at these four pictures, we can see the turbulent flow. For example, in here, we have the airplane and the turbulent flow around air wing. In here, this is the picture from Claude. Again, there is the turbulent flow in here, and this is from oceans. If you have this kind of problem, let's see, uh, the main aim is to obtain high fidelity numerical simulation. In other words, we want to obtain very accurate uh, simulation. But if you are doing the finite element, finite volume, or finite difference, you need to use millions or even billions degrees of freedom. But this is not efficient. Why? Because your at the end of the day, your matrix dynamical system will be have so large dimension, and this will um, your computational cost will be so high. And what we are proposing. If your system has dominant and recurrent structures, as we see in the previous uh, picture, then reduced order model can apply it successfully because it will minimize the computational cost by preserving the key features. This is important. Um, it will be computationally efficient because the order of your uh, system will not be any more million or billion it will be something 10 at most let's say 100 and we try to also preserve the key features but if your system is convect convection dominated for example if you have traveling wave if you don't have any dominant and recurrent structures then by using the basic reduced order model will not enough to capture the main dynamics from the system if this is the case, we are saying that we need to add extra term to get the more information from the system. I will come to that part for later. Let's start with the proper orthogonal decomposition and its short form is POD. POD is one of the most popular ROM technique and the aim is to construct a low dimensional ROM basis. These are the step, steps to create the ROM model, reduced order model. First of all, we need to create the ROM basis. It is phi1, phi2, phi r. These are is not million. It is something 10, 20, depend on your system, definitely very low number than million or billion. 
But um, in, in our research, in my field, we are using the POD. But if you want, you can use the different method. For example, the reduced basis method, you can also apply it. And let's see the construction, how we construct the proper orthogonal decomposition. First of all, we need to start with the partial differential equation. And we are specifically looking at the linear or nonlinear parabolic PD. And you can write this uh, PD as u dot is equal to f of u. In here, dot represents the time derivative. And this is the closed form. F could contain <laughs> linear or nonlinear terms. Okay? And the first step, we need to solve that problem because we need data. We need snapshots. We need to solve this time-dependent problem for different time instances, T1, T2, Tm. And these UH, T1 are the snapshots. In other words, are the solutions of that problem at different time instances. And you are also free to obtain these snapshots. If you want, you can use finite element as we do, or finite volume, or someone give to you data. There is no problem. But you need these data. You need these snapshots first of all. And then second step, for now, we have snapshots. This means that we have that terms. We have UH. And minimization problem tells us we need to find orthonormal, orthogonal, wrong basis with respect to L2 inner product that minimizes this difference. Okay? By doing some work in here, you can convert this minimization problem to the eigenvalue problem because your aim to obtain phi i's. And in here, the eigenvalue problem, this k is a matrix and its name is correlation matrix. And the open form is 1 over m. m is the number of the time instances you have. And y is the snapshot matrix. And it is nothing but its column are snapshots. You need to find the snapshots and you need to put the columns and you need to create your Y. You need to take the transpose. In here, MH should be mass matrix coming from the finite element. You have all of these. And then by using the single value decomposition, you need to find what is eigenvectors and what are eigenvalues. After finding that one, you can create your wrong basis as like this. But I want to point it out something in here. We know K is symmetric, real, positive. For this reason, your eigenvalues are real and non-negative. If you pay attention D, after D, your eigenvalues are zero. This means that you have D non-zero eigenvalues. This tells us that you have the number of POD modes. The rank is D. But if you pay attention in here, I put R. This means that you don't need to create all the POD modes. You need to just create the first R of them. If you want, this is not computationally so high. You can create all of them. There is no problem. But in ROM setting, we will not use all of them. This is the main point. And, um, okay, I think that's here. Okay, for now, I want to explain how we construct the Galarkian ROM. From now on, you know your ROM basis. In other words, since we are using the POD to obtain the ROM basis, you can call it also POD basis. They are the same name, okay? To um, explain better, I just choose the one specific problem to see what will be our matrix, tensor, and vectors. Let's look at the one-dimensional Burgers equation. This is the time-dependent part. This is the diffusive part. This is the convective part. And this is your force. And this is the viscosity coefficient. For now, as I said, since our rank is D, we are choosing to just first our ROM basis. And how we, how we decide what should be our R? Because let's say your D is 50. How we decide the R value? 
from the previous part, since we saw the singular value decomposition, we know the eigenvalues, am I right? These eigenvalues are decay order. By looking at the eigenvalues, you can understand up to which point your POD modes contain the largest kinetic energy. This should be the shortcut decision. Okay? And then, since we know our ROM basis, we need to create the ROM approximation, ROM solution UR. You need to create this UR linearly combination of your basis function. In here, VK are your basis functions, and this is depend on space variable. But these coefficients are time dependent, and UR is nothing but linearly combination of that. Okay, after that step, what we need to do, this is your problem, replace your U with UR from solution. Plug in here, and you will get that system. Am I right? Equation 7. And then we need to project equation 7 onto the first R modes. And from now on, since we know the open form of UR, because you are that one, take this term, the right hand side, put here, 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 here. And then let's see what we'll have. Okay. Oh, sorry. We have this equation. If you look at that one, because since this is the time dependent coefficient, you can pull out the inner product. This is, what do you think? What should be that part? Do we know what is that? Any, any idea? Can we directly say what is this inner product? This will be, what? This will be identity matrix, am I right? Why? Because when we construct our POD basis for the minimization problem, we say that it should be orthogonal with respect to L2 inner product. For this reason, this is identity. And this means that this part cancel. You have only this time-dependent coefficient in here, time derivative. Oop, if you jump in here, we will see A dot in here. Take that term and go to the right-hand side. This will be minus new times this summation. But this inner product will not be any more identity because you have only constraint on that one. Okay? For this reason, minus new times that part, we just label as A. Since you have two indices, this means that A should be matrix. This means that for the right hand side, you have matrix times the unknown time dependent coefficient a if you look at that term still take that one go to other side for now you have three indices k j i okay this will be tensor and you have two coefficients in here and you can you need to write it that way okay for the pod we are solving pod part offline you need to just do it one times to obtain this matrix and the tensor, you need to just do it one times. But this is the online stage because this is the time dependent. And by using the time discretization method you like, you need to solve that one for different time instances. But if you look at this dimension in here, it is just R. This is R by one vector. This is R by R by R matrix. This is R by R by our uh, tensor, okay? It is computationally really efficient. But depend on problem, sometimes oh, we just label those, this dynamical system as Galarkin ROM. This is the G ROM. This can yield inaccurate results based on the problem. Okay, I will explain what kind of problem Galarkin ROM yields inaccurate results. Let's see, let's talk about the closure modeling. Okay. When you have problem, you can easily make a comment, Galarkin ROM yield accurate or inaccurate result by looking at the decay eigenvalues. Because you are finding the eigenvalues by using the POD. If your eigenvalues, the rate of eigenvalues is so fast, this means that 
by using just few POD modes will be enough to capture the main dynamics. For this reason, in that case, Galarkin ROM will be will gives us the accurate result. But if your problem is convection dominated, this means that if you plot the uh, the decay of the eigenvalues, the rate is will be not fast as we see in the structure dominated. What it means, this means that when you increase the R values, your um, uh, your eigenvalues will not decay so fast. For this reason, by using just first few POD modes will not be enough to capture the dynamics. For this reason, we need to say that this is under resolved regime. It means that by using the small number of the modes will not enough to solve the problem. This is the reason it is under resolved. If this is the case, in our research area, what we are doing in our work, we have two ways to increase the numerical accuracy. The first one, if the dimension is not enough, it is straightforward. You need to increase the dimension, am I right? You need to use more POD modes. But we need to keep the uh, computational efficiency small. For this reason, we don't want to increase R. For this reason, we are trying to adding the low dimensional closure term to the system to increase the accuracy. Okay, what it means, if you close this closure A, this is the closed form of Galarkin, Galarkin ROM. This means that you are adding closure term to the Galarkin ROM to increase the numerical accuracy. But what is the aim of the closure term? closure in other words we can say the correction term because let's say we have the number of the pod modes but you do the truncation am i right you are just taking the first of them and you just discard the rest but maybe the rest pod modes also contain the important information and we just discard it and we are losing the information this is the reason this closure term should models the interaction between unresolved, this means that the discarded mode, and the resolved mode that we are using in the ROM. Okay? And um, the, another question, how we obtain this closure term? What we need to do? There are two different closure models, ROM closure models. Um, you can generate the functional ROM closure or structure ROM closure model. If you are using the functional, definitely you need to use physical insight. For example, you can use the eddy viscosity. But if you are using the structural ROM closures, you need to use mathematical arguments. And these are the examples to just how we model this closure term. You can use approximate the convolution, you can use parameterized manifolds, or you can use data-driven. This is our case. Since its name is data-driven, this means that we need to use data to find this closure term, okay? Uh, data-driven variational multi-scale reduced order model. From now on, I will say DDVMS ROM. And there are two kinds DDVMS ROM. One of them is two-scale, and the other one will be three-scale. The name depends on how we decompose the, the total POD modes and the ROM solution. If you are dividing two parts, it will be 2S. If you dividing all the POD modes in three groups, it will be 3S, okay? But for all of them, for both methods, the idea is same. Your dimension should be R. You shouldn't increase your dimension. It should be small still. Since we just use the first RPOD modes in our ROM setting, this means that this is the resolved modes. You have already used it. Since the rest, you discarded it, their names will be unresolved mode. Okay? And then, D is the number of the total POD modes. If you use all the POD modes, you will get very accurate results. But the dimension will be high. You don't want to do that. U R means that this is the solution by using the first R modes. 
this means that this is the result solution of your very accurate solution UD. Okay? U prime means that since you just constructed that one by using the, the discarded mode, this means that this should be unresolved solution of your UD. Okay? And then the idea is simple. We need to start with a very accurate uh, system. If you discarded this D, this means that you have the uh, PD and you just project it onto the wrong system. Okay? If you put UD, this means that you are putting the very accurate solution in here. Let's project onto the first R modes. Let's do some trick in here. What is UD? How can we write UD? UD is nothing but the linear combination of all the modes. Am I right? And what is the indices, indices in here? I. I is from 1 to R. In here, the indices in here, 1 to D. In here, 1 to R. This means that in here, after R, I mean that R plus 1 to D will vanish because this is orthogonal. For this reason, you can easily write that one as that way. These are equal because of the orthogonality. But you cannot directly say that one, oh, this is equal to that one. Why? Because F, first one, F could um, have some nonlinear term, or even maybe you will not have any mass matrix in here. They will not orthogonal. This is the reason I can write the right-hand side as like this. I can add that term and subtract that one. Am I right? If you close that part, this will be nothing but Galartian wrong. This means that DDVMS wrong is nothing but Galartian wrong plus closure term. And we need to model that one. For now, equation 16 is not a closed problem. Why? Because this part is not directly depend on UR. It also depends on UD. This means that we need to solve the uh, we need, uh, uh, yeah, we need to solve the, this uh, closure problem. To do that, we need to create ansatz. It means that you need to find such a G should depend on UR. This inner product should approximate this difference. Okay? This means that we need to find G in here. To find G, we need to solve another minimization problem. But this is again for the offline stage. You need to just do it one time, okay? And if you look at in here, we need to minimize this, this, this difference for G. This means that unknown is G. The rest should be known. This means that you need to know that part. You need to know that part. This should be the only unknown, okay? How can we find what is UD form? By the way, form means that full order models. This means that very accurate solution, okay? At the beginning, we have data, am I right? To find that part, what we need to do, this is your data, this is your snapshots. Since the dimension is D, just project onto the, all the wrong bases and obtain that one. To find UR form, you need to apply the same idea but you need to project onto the R space. And then, since you know the form of F, you can easily compute that part. There is no problem in here. To find G, since we are trying to find ansatz, you have different ways. For example, let's close that part. This is nothing but your Galarkin ROM. In your Galarkin ROM, you have matrix and you have tensor. Depending on your choice, your ansatz could have only linear term or non-quadratic uh, term. In our case, we try to find A tilde and B tilde that minimizes that part. Okay? After finding your A tilde, B tilde that comes from this minimization problem, you need to insert your system because this part is closure term. 
then you need to solve that one in online stage because this is time dependent but again the dimension is just r okay for the tree scale pretty the same idea but for now we just divided the three groups again we have on result but for now for the result part we are dividing again to make it large result and small result and then we will create three solution large result solution small result solution and on result solution we will get pretty the same thing but only one difference this is exactly will be same if you look at, do you see any difference? This is US, this is you all, am I right? But this part is same. This part is the same. The only difference, you project that one onto which space? For the first one, you are projecting onto the large result modes. In the second one, since the indices just start with R1 plus 1, this means that you are projecting that equation on to the small result scales okay in other words in 2s you have just one minimization problem but in 3s you have since you have two closure terms you have two minimization problems and we know that minimization problem is sensitive because it is they are the inverse problem if you have more parameters it means that you have flexible you have more flexible to just create these operators okay if you apply the minimization problem in here at the end of the day you need to find these metrics and this tensor if you solve the second minimization problem you need to find these metrics and this tensor and you need to plug in here and again you need to just by using the time discretization you need to solve that part Okay, again, if you just summarize until that one, Galarkin Rome, we don't have any closure term. For the two SDDVMS Rome, we have one closure term, and we need to just uh, minimize the one minimization problem. But in 3S, since we have two closure terms, we have two minimization problem. Okay, this is the main difference. Okay, let's see the numerical results. Um, my numerical results will be based on the one-dimensional Burgers equation. Time domain and the space domain are from zero to one, okay? And then this is the initial condition. This is the step function. To obtain the snapshots, okay, to obtain the data, for uh, we need to solve the finite element part. And we are using delta H. This is the increment in space is one over 2048. And delta T, the increment in time is 10 to the power minus 3. The viscosity is 10 to the power minus 3. If you put in here, this is 10 to the power minus 3, but the coefficient in here 1. This means that this is convective problem, not diffusive, by looking the, by comparing the coefficients. And then P1 represents, uh, we are using the linear finite element piecewise functions, and Cn means that crank Nicholson time discretization we are using. Okay, and to just make the comparison between Galakian ROM, 2S, and 3S DDVMS ROM, we, we will look at the error. We just use the L2 average error. This is the definition. This means that we need to look at the difference between your ROM and the projection of your data. This data is nothing but the finite element solution. Okay, we need to find this error. Okay, I will present a couple of tables to you and I will present different regimes. The first one will be reconstructive. Reconstructive means that uh, at the beginning we create the POD and we create the ROM operators. ROM operators are A, B in GROM. In 2S and 3S, it will be A, B and A tilde B tilde part. We create that one onto the time interval 0 to 1. And you need to test your ROM on the same time interval. There is no discrepancy in here. Okay? 
for both of them, we are applying the same time interval. Let's look at what uh, this table tells us. Okay, this is the Burgers equation. Nu will be 10 to the power minus 3. This is the reconstructive regime I explained in here. This is the first, uh, second column represent the Galactian Rome errors. The third column, QSVDVMS. Uh, let's say fourth or fifth, sixth, all of them just represent the three SVDVMS ROM. And the first column represents the number of R. This means that how many POD modes you are using. Okay? In finite elements, uh, the number of the basis function, it is kind of at least you need to use thousand, am I right? But in here, three, seven, eleven, something. Okay, let's fix the R. This means that you fix your dimension. Let's compare the, these three different ROM models. Okay. For the Galarkin ROM, this is the error. If you use QS, definitely we see that error, we get uh, smaller error. Am I right? If you compare the 3S, it is getting much smaller. But we need to pay attention to something. In QS, we have one minimization problem, am I right? To solve that one, you need to use parameters. It means that you need to use tolerance. But in 3S, since you have two tolerances, you have more flexibility. In that table, I fix the tolerance in 2S, okay? I fix the tolerance. And in 3S, I fixed also tolerance for the large scale and I play with the small scale to tolerance to see that if you change one parameter, actually this new ROM will give us the better result than 2S or not. Do you see in here? I play with the just one parameter and the result will be much smaller than that one. If you increase your R, if R7, there are two order of almost two order uh, magnitude difference. This means that this is, gives us really good results. But uh, what is R1? R1 represents where do you cut um, the large and the small resolve scales, okay? Uh, we just try to different R1 values to see that which one gives us the best solution, okay? Less error in other words. The other table, again, this is related to reconstructive regime, but for now, I choose optimal tolerance for both cases. I didn't put any restriction. Since um, I'm looking the optimal uh, 3S and 2S definitely for the fixed R value, um, better than GROM, this is really visible, but if you compare 2S and 3S, the improvement as not much as the previous table, okay? Because for both cases, I choose the best optimal tolerances to give the least error. Okay, for the third table, I changed my regime. What I applied, cross-validation. In other words, I create my POD and ROM operators on the time interval 0 to 0.7, okay? But I tested my ROMs on the larger time interval. This means that ROM is not only the, um, there is no, uh, there is not only the one benef uh, benefit. It is not just only the, uh, the dimension is reduced. It also, you can use the different parameter to just rerun your ROM model. In here, we just extend our time interval. And again, if you look at the different R values, we will see that 2S and the 3S definitely more accurate than the Galarkin row. But for the fixed R value, if you compare the 2S and the 3S, still we will get improvement, but not much as we see in the reconstructive regime. Okay. And the last one, predictive regime. In here, we make problem harder to see that Actually, this 3S gives us better results or not, or 2S. What is the difference in here? I create my ROM basis and the ROM operators on 0 to 0 0.7 time interval, but I tested my ROM on the different time interval. These two time intervals are disjoint. 
This means that problem is getting more harder, uh, just harder. Okay. Uh, for the fixed R value, 2S and 3S, if you compare, definitely better than glycine row. But the improvement, okay, if you look at here, here, still we will get improvement, but not much as for the reconstruct depletion because problem is getting harder. Okay, um, here's my conclusions. Uh, what we observed, definitely 2S and 3S data-driven variational mouth scale reduced order model, more accurate than the galactin ROM. Another one, 3S is more accurate than the 2S. We have also observed that one. But the improvement in 3S over 2S is less significant if you are using the cross-validation or the predictive relation. But still, there is improvement. In our um, test cases, we don't have any rules how we find R1 and how we find these tolerances. What we did, we just play with the, these parameters and we try to find the optimal result. As a future work, maybe we, need, uh, we can find such a, uh, such a way to just find the optimal parameter R1 and the tolerances. Also, another uh, feature work uh, direction um, to obtain our ROM closure term, we just use the data driven. But maybe we can use different topological structure to obtain that one. For example, we can use maybe machine learning uh, to obtain which information will be beneficial to us to add the system. Okay. And these are my references. The first one um, is the paper related to that work. Thank you so much. That's it. Do you have questions? Oh, oh sure, sure. Sorry. Thank you very much for this very nice talk. Is there any questions here or online? know if it's possible to apply this method for hyperbolic equations, for example? Or just for a question. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it is time dependent. Am I right? Your problem? Um, still, you can apply. Still, you have chance. Uh, first, yeah, you can apply. But depend your uh, parameters. Which, uh, which problem you are using, you are using the hyperbolic, but I mean that, uh, for example, in our case, if your model is more convective, I mean that uh, you need to do something more to obtain the more accurate results, but still applicable. Mm -hmm. No problem. Any other questions? I have another question. This is just, uh, I'm not an expert, so it's just curiosity. Maybe it's okay. something stupid, but I'm wondering, uh, so these snapshots you talk about, you obtain them and resolving uh, an equation, basically. Okay, so is there any way where you got these snapshots from experiments, maybe, where you don't have, a, you don't have an explicit equation? This is really a good question because most of the time people just ask that question and I will come to your question. Okay, in here we are solving the, that problem, am I right? By using the finite element and they ask, oh, if you are using the finite element in here, why you are using the reduced order model one more time? But what we are saying, we need data. If someone gives us the data, our aim to obtain the wrong. This is the case. And I mean that for some problem, you have the uh, PD partial differential equation representation, am I right? If this is the case, you can use the, the problem, you can use the formula. But if you don't have a formula, definitely you need to get the data from the experiment. This means that you are right, you can use it. No problem. There is no more question. We thank again our speakers. Thank you very much.
Um, uh, we would like to see you in the next talk, which will be the, the last one of, of this season. Okay, so see you soon.